to say. Mm. My name is Freeman Nelson. The family Freeman Nelson. Senor. Freeman Nelson, Senor. Freeman Nelson, Senor. Nice meeting all of you this morning. I'll read a word in Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 13. Are we there? If you have found the words, we are all reading. You can watch on the screen. From 1 to 2. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead ways, and faith towards God. Can you all see it? Of the doctrine of baptism, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Yeah. All right. Uh, I entered into Good News Mission School in 1996. So in 96, I was in class one. Now I am class 27, getting to class 28. Do you understand it? Yeah. So, I don't know where I'm going to finish this, this school. But I'm still going on. Maybe until I die, I'm still schooling. Yeah. Recently, I was thinking about the message to give to our brethren. So, you know, there is this topic that I like studying these days. The, top, the topic of tabernacle. And so, I wanted to gather so much information about the tabernacle. So, I went from region to region, from all our pastors, gathering information about tabernacle. But it seems all the information I gathered so far here, I have them. Already. So, I have to travel outside Ghana. So, I first started from Togo. I have some friends there, so I visited them. I need an information. I need so many information about Tabernacle. I gathered a few there and I went to Benin. And I went to Central Republic of Central African Republic, something like that. And I may call Central African Republic. I gathered some information. I went to Kenya. We call Kenya. Eswatini. Eswatini. Even as far as India. I could see India. Bo. And also Philippines. And the Philippines. I gathered so much information. Me and piano. But when I brought everything together, na me I still needed more. Na I think what I got were not was not enough. So, I, I needed more because of that. I visited an old friend. And I know that old friend also have a best friend that has so much knowledge about the tabernacle. And he told me, yeah, that friend of his has so much information about the tabernacle. So I asked if you could lead me to him. He told me, sure, why not? I said, I will lead you to that friend of mine. So he said, that friend of his have the original, uh, how do you call it? The original 
image of the tabernacle. The one we have here is the photocopy. So I asked him, when are we going to take that journey? So a date was set. Uh, we have to travel together. Uh, finally, we got to the doorpost of that friend of his. When we know. And Jesus came out. That is heaven, okay? I went to heaven. Now, yes, to gather more it. information. And so so that best friend before. of mine is the Holy Spirit that led me to heaven. So we knock and Jesus came out. What do you want? The Holy Spirit has to do the talking. He yes, said, so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you are welcome. So I was taken through heaven check the heavenly tabernacle. So I asked a lot of questions about things. You know, I was not carrying enough notebook to write what the information I got from the place. But it seems I got some form of information. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Do you know what this is? Have you seen it before? What is its name? Tabernacle, right? Yes. So I was introduced to this. I asked a question about everything you have seen here. Everything you have seen here, ask a question about them. Right from the gate to the inner part of it. But if I want to tell you one by one, even one here is not enough to finish all this. So, I will make everything simple and then put before you all. Spiritual life began here on the desert from this tabernacle. When Israel was confused, they didn't know how to atone for their sins. Moses was using the method he knew. But God showed him this tabernacle how to give peace in the heart of the children of Israel. And this is called the shadow gospel. Do you know what shadow is? Do you all have shadows? So we call this the shadow gospel. I like this shadow gospel so much. In 96, as I said, I received salvation. I was lost, but I was found. I was so zealous for God. I really didn't know what I was doing, but I thought I was doing the best. Do you know this word? Gagai. Watch out. So, I served in Assemblies of God. Assemblies of God. Tema Community 4 here. Tema Community 4, huh? I really thought I was doing something important for God. In my salvation testimony, there is someone I cannot eliminate. One afternoon, I took my cousin to Tama Community 8 to help me meet a group of people. He is good at the Chi language, so he was my translator. Every afternoon, I took him out to preach. He would translate for me. You know, he was also a pastor in Good News Mission called Daniel. One of the first pastors that were ordained. Pastor Daniel, Pastor Daniel. Daniel, Daniel. Mandela's group. So, in fact, it was that Tama Community 8, one afternoon, 3rd January, that is where we met Pastor Lee. 
Na ye tema committee eight. A year of a point that also me and sign is your softly. How did this happen? A see then away see. Pastor Tete, the late, was in Korea by then. He received salvation somewhere in 1995. So when the, the mission was coming to Ghana, when they were bringing good news mission to Ghana, so Pastor Tete had to give his whole information to the missionaries to meet the family, his children and wife to preach gospel to them. So and where I was meeting those the group of people, those group of people were just behind Pastor Tete's house. I didn't know anything then. So, you know, by then Samonim Janet here was attending BBA, Bible Believers uh, Fellowship. So, she didn't want to listen to the gospel. So when the missionaries, when she knows the time the missionaries come to the house, and she will run away from the house. And today, when I think about it, I think I am very grateful to Samonim Janet for running away all the time that those days. Because because of that, the missionary was stranded and wanted to meet someone else apart from her. So, he was going around to meet somebody when Samonim Jenner ran away and met us. I was seriously preaching to 11 people, me and my translator, and then we were 13. Then I saw a white man come, came behind and sat down with his wife, far behind the people. Do you know what happened? He was standing there with his wife, far behind the people. When I saw a white man and the wife sitting listening to me, my Holy Spirit had increased. Wow, this, this is how far God has brought me. I was charged. And my, and my skill, everything has changed that moment. I was preaching with this strength. But when I look at the man's face, the, the, the stranger's face. His face was not bright as other people. So, he listened to me for about 30-40 minutes. I think he endured enough. Then he raised his hand. Can I ask a question? I said, oh, yes. I thought he was going to contribute. I thought he was going to contribute. So I, I I quickly gave him the chance to say anything he wanted to say. Lo and behold, Pastor Lee started bombarding me with several severe questions I couldn't answer. It was a kind of embarrassing me in front of the people. Why would he do such a thing? I didn't obey the ABC. The people know that this is a powerful preacher. But to that stranger, what I was saying was just a trash. So, the two of us, the way we were, the, the preaching that day was, was different. The way I weighed, the way he weighed, it was too different. He started bombarding me with questions. I thought he would be helping me to win these people. So the Holy Ghost that has increased in me started diminishing. What is that? That day, I felt so embarrassed and sorry for meeting a stranger like him. I have to ask all the, the people I was witnessing to go 
and then I will meet them the next day. Because I want to cover certain shame, okay? When the people left, I regretted allowing the people even to go. This man sat me down for about three hours. That day, Saturday, It was not easy. We were flipping pages of the Bible one after the other. I attended Bible school, a salt phone. Bible school was salt phone. And graduated, so I thought I knew the Bible. I was flipping page to page. When he says one, I say ten. Maybe be a for come back my kid. When he says one, I say ten. Or come back, come back. I will be shep, 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 shep. My mouth was so fast. My baby and ten, 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 man, why did they need But you know what? That's when in baby. He was only hitting the point of sin. The point of sin. The point of sin. Yeah, no, all cases would be a bonia fan, bonia fan, bonia fan. Now, my strength to open the Bible started reducing. Started reducing. Started reducing. Started reducing. Started reducing. When I finally had nothing to say, now he charged the more. Now, he charged the more. I was just sitting listening. So quiet. Third January 1996. A year of a point that I told me, so He opened the Bible, Joshua chapter 2, the story of Rahab. Obey, trust him, Joshua, Timmy, and Rahab, Baba Kosemno. He talked about the story of Rahab three hours. What kind of preacher is this? I only have one hour every afternoon. I was schooling Alliance Francais, Airport Second Junction. I had to go. Daddy, this man stopped me. Three hours. By the time he finished, it was almost four, four o'clock in the evening. I think all the anger for not meeting someone in Janet were poured on me. Then I said, The final question he asked me. I said, Mr. Freeman. Mr. Freeman. When you see there was a dirty woman in that city, Jericho. But after everything, she was the only person and her family saved. Do you know the secret? She received some sign from the spies sent from Israel camp. The scarlet thread. And she was instructed to bind it at her window. Now And when she does that, so yes, sir. Bringing all her family into that, that house with that scarlet thread. Every house in Jericho will fall except for her house. Because of that scarlet thread. She was saved. Do you also have the sign of the scarlet thread in your life today that when the world is destroyed like Jericho, you will be saved? That scarlet thread is the blood of Jesus. Are you sure you have that covenant that assurance that if Jesus should come today to pick the righteous, you are one of them. All my blah, 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 doom, quenched. So he said, Mr. Freeman, I can tell you one thing for sure today. When I see your state, if you die today, you will go to hellfire, regardless of all what you've been doing for God. That last message he gave me, I wish he never said it. That 
when he finally prayed and said, Amen. He gave me his card to, to look for him. Their church is in Tama Community 11. When we all separated, I was walking back home. I crossed the 8th traffic. So, from the way through the joint church, going down to, I was in community uh, four then, surgical flat. I was so much afraid. I was so much afraid. If you die today, I am sure you cannot go to heaven because of sin. That word, I was afraid, seriously. I was so careful looking at Looking right and left, in right. case there is a stray car to to hit me. If I die, I will go to hellfire. You are listening to this message and you have the strength to laugh, but I had no strength to laugh. It was so serious in my heart that time. When I got, when I barely got home, na I couldn't sleep. I was so restless. So, all what I have done is trash. I will go to hell. All along, there was this word that has been knocking on my heart. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. Verse 27 says, It is appointed unto men once to die. After this, the judgment. And which in a term war. Verse 28 says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And he will come back the second time. The word says, Unto him that look for him, to take them without sin unto salvation. That word, always, before I met that preacher, I used to read it a lot. And it was so knocking on my, my heart. Jesus will come and take people without sin and to salvation. But I was confessing my sins every day. When will I be free from this sin to be ready to meet that Jesus? I asked my senior pastors. Deacons, elders, so many questions. Nobody was able to give me a satisfying answer. Maybe some are so from penny four, I saw him penny four, they came for or be any word me, mamma, in Yanua, a mamma, my toyemu. Especially about Hebrews 9 28. It is too far, he will So when this man, Pastor Lee, said this word to me, it is your way, I also fully cast out any chairman. I went back to Hebrews and I was thinking deeply about it. I said, no, this man, the fear he put in me, perhaps he has the answer. I will, I will go and look for him. He said they are in community 11. What's so community 11? I thought White Man Church is a big building. I went to community 11. Committee 11 asking for good news mission church. The way I suffered that day. Saddam Brahme Bray. Nobody knew about good news mission in Committee 11 then. I never knew they were new in the system. Because the way the man talked is as if they have a big chapel somewhere. Everybody knows the direction to the place. But when I talk about Koreans, 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 to a certain point, people started, ah, I've been seeing some Koreans in this house, in that place, in that place. So I finally got to Committee 11, the origin, the beginning of Good News Mission place. Today, you come to church and you are looking at time. When are we going to close? In the beginning, there was nothing like looking at time. We didn't have time. When the missionary say, Amen, go home, then you are free to go home. So, the can say, Amen, go home, then you are free to go home. 
Today you can say, oh, I, I have just 30 minutes. Let's have fellowship, 30 minutes. And they me, I say, when I got there, this man grabbed me, ping. From that afternoon, if it's every I left around 12 p.m. Me 12 a.m. Sorry. I was turning. Ah, this man won't he close? Won't he close? Won't he close? Won't he till late in the night? Me dan dan mo ure on point na on point na kosi na judo. He have fellowship with me ah, and said we are coming to have evening service. So join. After joining, they they caught me again. Fellowship. Those days, if you are living with somebody, you cannot attend Good News Mission. Because if you go home, they will lock the door. You can't get in. But through that, God gave me that grace, special grace. When I heard the gospel, how my sins were washed away. Hebrew, eh, I'm sorry. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. This word. Hebrews chapter 10, 20, uh, I mean 17 and 18. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. But our fellowship was not gentle like this. So. Because of English barrier, the missionaries were drawing and writing the words on our chest. They would put their hand on our chest and be writing the words and saying it for you to understand. It. But but even in that situation, we receive salvation. Because that was the work of Holy Spirit, not man's work. I was so grateful that finally, all the questions in my heart about when will somebody be righteous to wait for Jesus' second coming were all answered. answered. I became so crazy. And myself, I, I didn't understand what was happening to me. When I received salvation, I couldn't sit down even one second. I need to tell somebody this joyful news. I was going around everywhere in Tema. The wrong message I gave to people. And When I grabbed this new one, because it was so easy for me to understand, I thought people would also accept it in that easy way. I was going house to house, talking about this message. But I sounded foolish to many people. Especially the story about Jacob and Esau. I understood it then so clearly. So it was the only message I could explain well at the time. You know what? After I received salvation, every knowledge I had vanished. It was as if I had nothing again in my, 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 my mind. So only Jacob and Esau's story was so vivid. In my mind. And that was the only message I preached everywhere. Today I can talk about the tabernacle. <laughs> but those days it was not easy. So Jesus Christ met me at the right time. He met every one of us seated here at the right time. And I always said that. We have been called for a purpose. Amen. Amen. But just as the reading went this morning in Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. It says what? What Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection. Not laying again the foundation of 
repentance from dead words. And enti, of faith towards God. Yes. Enti mama ye nya Christo fitin asensem no. Na ye mprin kod ye eye pen mu. Na ye mfa nyuma funu mu, ye mfa nyuma funu mu adwen sakra. Of the doctrine of baptism and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Ni asubo ahodo ho nchekere ni insaguso ni awufo sori e ni daate mu anto fa pimbio so the writer of hebrews is telling us that spiritual life comes in stages nancy the author of hebrews from one chapter say who want to abow ni need so eba from one one stage to another if he anamo ba ko na to ko sifu fro so so salvation is the basic teaching of Christ. A the Christian church and if it is in some name kwaje. So here we are asked to drop it and move on to a mature stage. The he was here for no to ho, ne enko be e this way e onyibre no. Leave the principal teachings of Christ salvation aside and move on to mature stage. Munya Christ of it is in some name kwaje ne to ho, na mo enko and titia e tire se mo nyini ni mu. But there's something I want you to take notice of. As we bow, I'm a person of shame. So look at the first two lines. Monshe, aye, and since aye, dika, mi enu dika enu. Therefore, living the principles of the doctrine of Christ, in Timuma, yenya Christo fiti asian semano. Let us go on unto perfection. Na yem pren kodi aye penumu. Let us go on. This is what I want to emphasize. Na, emphasize on. Mama yem pren kodi when I'm person me kasi sudia. Let us go unto perfection. Mama yem pren kodi aye penumu. You know, there's this uh, man, Watson. When you move to a friend of Watson, he says that if you want to go fast, go alone. What if you say? want to go far, go together. Oh, per se, oh, un anti tema on kwa ko. Now per se, what mean anti kwechiri diya? Unu obin komu. When you want to go far, you must go together. So oh, per se, un anti kwechiri. So say unu obin komu. But if you want to go fast, as per se, kwa un tema. You have to go alone. As per se, un kwa oko. Hebrews chapter 6 says when you drop the doctrine the basic teaching of Jesus Christ to be able to attain that higher level you must go together did you read it well let us go on let us this is togetherness so attaining higher spiritual life is not by one person's job it is togetherness. We so all have to go together. Two my So you know what we are to do, right? If you want to go higher in spiritual life, do you know now? When you sabi di as I say, yeah, yeah, but see, two point home my brabo mo. Do you now know? A fair money. Togetherness. Sen kabomo. Alone, your mind is not important. One kwan wa di ni mu here. You doing it alone, you, because you can read well, you can pray well, you can fast well. This is not important. This point we need to trade among ourselves. You sell your weakness and gain strength from other people. You sell your lack of knowledge and wisdom and gain from other people. Let us go on to perfection. Together we will enter into perfection. But if you are alone, you cannot attain the level of perfection. So, the tabernacle, the shadow gospel, if you see that colored gate there, when you enter into it, the first thing you will meet, they call it, it is an, an altar, but an altar that bent, that bent offerings. Can you see the altar of bent offering there? When you go, you enter through that shining, colorful gate, you will meet an altar on which they bent offerings. That is where sin is bent. That is where sin is atoned for. But you see that the structure of the tabernacle. It has three doors and three halls. You know hall? 
Ewo apro miensa ene pia miensa. There are the stages of spiritual life under the shadow gospel. Eye hu mo pa bo inyi na so ahodo no ewo ensempa ne sosuma no. When you move further away from the altar of burnt offering, utu free or share for buchi ne ho kakra. You meet the lava. U be shia eye kuku no. Water pot. Eye eye hira nsu. You see there's nothing like you meet the altar of burnt offering, you return back from where you came. It is structured that when you enter, you journey till the end. And this tabernacle has an entry point but no exit point. Do you know why? When you enter into Christ, there is nothing like returning, coming back, going out. Once you enter, you remain inside. So, there is only one, one gate. When you enter through it, this, there, at the other side, there is no exit point. You must go and go and go till the end. So, when you move further away from the altar of burnt offering, there is lava. From the lava, you meet the second door, a veil into the holy place. Because the so when you open it, there are this, you'll see this thing. The table of showbread. So the priest will have to walk, eat the bread, and then the next thing is what? Then he will all lit this uh, candle. That is candlestick. Where can he do The last thing before he enters into the holiest of all is to burn incense. And so Bessi Abraham. There are stages, right? So spiritual life is not I receive salvation, I can go to heaven. That is not all. We must go further. Further ahead. And this is mostly what we all lack. Now most brethren are satisfied with salvation. I am saved, I can go to heaven. I have license to go to heaven. Whatever happened, whatever I do, I still can go to heaven. Once there was this brother in church, he named himself still holy. Even when I drink and I was, I am intoxicated. Hey, don't worry. I am still holy. I will go the to the Still holy. Yes, you are still holy. But you see, we were once slaves. Sin. I can hear so our slave master was sin, Satan. And while we were under his supervision, we were so obedient to him. He used us to do whatever wrong he wanted us to do. But now we were bought or we've been bought by another master. When we were slaves to sin, we were controlled. Our minds were controlled by Satan. We did all his desires. Now we have become slave to righteousness. Do you understand the word slave to righteousness? If you read the book of Romans, you understand what is called being slave to righteousness. We were bought. Christ bought us from our slave master. We have become slave, I mean, of ra- a slave of all righteousness. So, righteousness rule over us. 
when you are ruled over by righteousness, you cannot but do righteous things. Is that not it? Is that not it? But mostly, in this world, Christians are really not well disciplined. If you go to Arab countries, they write at the airport, don't worry, there are no Christians here. Do you understand what that means? If you leave this phone there, it will be there till any time you want to come back for it. But they have the notion, the mindset that Christians, if there are Christians here, they will take it. Is that not it? The right discipline is not given after we say we have received salvation. The uh, yeah. first step of spiritual life. This is, we are talking about the second hall. This, this is the first hall where you can find all these things. This picture, the first hall. Is where the lava is, where the altar of burnt offerings. A place where sin is atoned for. The error, the position of salvation is the first hall. So, any spiritual life between the lava or the altar of burnt offering and the lava it's just a basic spiritual life. Whoever is playing or in between these two, the altar and the lava, is still under her basic teaching of Christ. We call these people spiritual children, spiritual babies. And babies, they pull on themselves. And they feel okay. They wee-wee on themselves. And that is normal. So, people who live the first whole spiritual life, do you know what happens? Even if I take that, if I steal that, it's still normal. I am righteous. They dirty their lives. If I do that, oh, it's not a problem. I am still holy. I'm still righteous. People who have this concept, they are living baby spiritual life. The basic teaching of Christ is still in them. They are not able to draw a clear line between the being and the being slave to righteousness or still under what? Slave of sin. Being slave of sin. Because when you move further away from this hall, you get to this hall, this place, hall two. You dine with God. There's something like eating bread. There's something like putting on the candle. Your life, your life is full of light. You are bright. When you move further away from here, you are burning incense. You are praying. You become a prayerful Christian. And as you are so close to God like this, your life is bright. So clean. You don't have time to even go back doing those dirty things you were doing in Hall 1. But because we don't have this time, Read Bible on our own. Pray on our own. We are not enlightened. Our life is not even smart. We are not bright. You see, but they pray on who enter into this place. They know when they are to enter, they wash their hands. When they, they do not stay, their life is not packed to the, that lava. That, oh, I am dirty, so 
I have the lover. The lover must always be around me to be washing me. When they wash themselves once, they enter into the holy place. They know if they don't do that, God is going to find problems around them. So, before they enter there, they decide their mind. They train themselves. What must I do? Steps. You walk from here. This is the second step. This is the third step. You are going here. You are going there. And if you leave anyhow, you will die here. They will bring your corpse out from this tabernacle. But you see, we live anyhow. Those days there was discipline. There was total discipline. You know, under the Qin dynasty in China. Now, a very huge wall was built around oh. the whole China. They built the wall to protect their citizens from the Mongolians, invaders, and also barbarians. Now, to Today, all of us hear about the Great Wall, the Great Wall of China. But after the wall was built. Within 100 years after the, the walls were built, China was attacked three times. So they didn't understand. This wall is so huge that no one can climb it. How did all these enemies come to attack us? How? Where did they pass? Investigations were conducted. Do you know what they found? Do you know how the enemies entered? They entered the guards at the gate were bribed by their enemies. Now, I went for up on an idea or get them with the fear. Time for you in hundred years, they were attacked three times. If you are a monotonous or some prince. So when they, invest, they, when they conducted the investigation, they realized our guards were bribed. Then, the king realized, even though we built this huge wall to protect our people, there are laws for us to do. I think we should not be scared about our enemies. Or of our enemies. We should be scared of our own selves. We have work to do within us. Even though this wall is built, enemies still come. Why? Our girls do not understand the reason why the walls are built. They endanger the lives of their own people by taking something small, bribe. So the king has to work to reset the minds of all the people. There is problem internally. But we are only scared of the outside what? enemies. We are enemies of ourselves. We need to ensure the correct measure of discipline is what? Uh, issued in this world. If you read the book of Nehemiah, it's the same. All the sleepless night Nehemiah had by building the walls around Jerusalem after all this, the people of I mean, Israel still have problems. So, Nehemiah was so surprised. What is it again? When he went through to investigate, he realized that the Israelites themselves have enslaved their own people. Those that are a bit richer, made their own people slaves and made their own people to serve them took everything from them so they can serve them do you understand the mindset so Nehemiah thought that no building the walls alone is not important no, it's not enough. I must work on my own people 
And they have spies among them. Whatever they discuss, Tobiah and Sambala outside the world here. Because some of them were allied to the enemies. So all the toil we have gone through, this is nothing, it's a waste. I have to work on my people. So Nehemiah started slapping people, beating people. If you read the book of Nehemiah, you see this. Just to ensure total discipline. And set correct order. We need discipline. In the third hall, the priest cannot enter there without blood in his hand. When he enters, this is when you enter the third hall, this is the only thing you'll see. The Ark of the Covenant. You have seen this before, right? Here, the priest comes here once a year. The high priest, once a year. By carrying blood. Without that, he will not come back alive. So, the priest cannot live anyhow. He knows if he goes there anyhow, he will not return. So, he has to rehearse every time and then. To make sure that he's well uh, informed about where he's going. In this, we have, these are the things we have in that act. Or the, it is also called the mercy seat. The two tablets of the law. And the golden mana bowl. And Aaron's rod that bad it. These were the things inside, the three things inside the covenant box. I'll still go back to the discipline aspect. There are so much to talk about all these things. But Ghanaian brothers and sisters, if we want to go far, if we want to go through all these stages of spiritual life. I'm sorry, I don't have enough time to explain everything to you. We have to go back and work on ourselves. Our churches in Ghana is almost 28 years, but it is still weak. I'm sorry, I work on the debate and fear you know what you said. That's why I'm right. Our Good News Mission Church was established here long before even Obinim came to Tamakom 29 here. When we were here working to dig in the ground, we were listening to Apreku those times. You see, now these people have developed, they have increased so much. When you go to the churches out there, there are certain level of discipline. There. Today, when you are coming to sit, an usher will guide you sit here. You want to sit wherever you want. And the churches there, if you not sit where the usher wants you to sit, you'll be sacked. Go outside. Because we are breaking order in the church. I don't know how we have come to have these kinds of attitude. Living, I mean, just fond of, happy with the gospel, I am saved. All other kinds of discipline, we don't want them instilled in us. Because 
There are these three divine things of God, like I talk about three doors, three halls. God Himself is three in one God the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Do you know the words they have? They do. This is what they do. God the Father, He chooses us. You see the word? Please, can you give us that word? In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 6, God the Father doesn't say, He doesn't give salvation. God the Father chooses us from all parts of the world. It is recorded in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 6. When He finally finished choosing us, please. We'll read it. Can you see it? Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. I say, said ye wo ye ye wo odomu Christo mu and sana wari she we as yas ye. Say ye nya o te fo ni nipa a wo huni asem nenim. O ye ye to ho se or nam ye to Christo so befa ye abaye mu said ye ne pe eni sorti ye. Na Ama we ye nadum a or the adum ye wo ne double muno en munyam aye. Thank you. So the scripture said he chose us. He chose us o ye. So we can be holy to him. See a baye concro amano. But after choosing us, now we ye ye children. I'll go back to my pictures, okay? Masa coming for ni hubi. After choosing us, o ye ye children. He he delivered us, he delivered us into the hands of Jesus. Or the echo share, yes, sir. Two, yes. God chose you and gave you to Jesus Christ. So Jesus does the saving. Yes, no, Jim Quano. All are recorded exactly in Ephesians. Well, Kruti Nina prefer Ephesus from Metibacono. So the three God in one, it in Yamiba Sacron. The first one chooses us. Gather us together and introduce us to Christ. Christ also buys us with his blood. And then the third one, the Holy Spirit, this is what he does. Holy Spirit seals all those that Christ has saved. After Jesus also finished saving you, he hands you over to the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah, you also do your, your job. So Holy Spirit seals you. When he say you are sealed, you understand? The water in this bottle is sealed. You see, it cannot spill out. It's sealed inside it. So you are saved, intact. You are intact here. This is what Holy Spirit does to us. God the Father chooses all of us in all the four corners of the world. And then, God the Son saves everybody with his blood. God the Holy Spirit saves us. You will not come out again. There is, there is entry point but no exit point. You are sealed. You will not come out again. That is why we say salvation is eternal. Amen. Amen. Are you not happy? Why didn't you say amen? Amen. You are sealed. Even if you meet problem, you meet with problem, you are still sealed. There are times. The weather gets cool, so the water here feels very cool, isn't it? There are times we have this kind of weather, very hot. So the water, sometimes because of the 
the weather it can become warm. Though you are still, there are troubles sometimes you meet. But the troubles will not bring you out from this bottle anymore. Because you are still by Holy Spirit. Eternal Holy Spirit. So these three divine things are in our lives. And so our lives are secure forever. Yes. It does not give us the the upper hands to do whatever we want. We must all remember that we are slaves to righteousness. And that God cares about us, about our lives. So if you live anyhow, God deals with you anyhow. Do you you get it? That is why we all need to know and be sure that the Lord has a will for saving us. And that we all must be ready to follow that will. Not to live any how we want. He chose us for a plan, for a reason. There are better people, they're very zealous, ready to be faithful to the words of God, but you are chosen. Far better than you. They are ready to even spend whatever they have. Why the We are very calculative, even if we are serving the Lord. Just because we do not understand. The purpose of God saving us. All these many years, I believe that by now all good news pastors have known that God really loves us by calling us. Especially in Ghana. Because for all these many years, we have dedicated our life for gospel. God takes care of us. There are times life becomes so difficult. But the Lord takes us out from them all. There are times it seems you cannot see clearly. Everything has become so blurred in, 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 before you. You really don't know where you are going. It seems if you enter into that, you are not really going to come out. But we go and come out every time and then. This is how much our God loves us. So brothers and sisters, let us not live anyhow we want. It doesn't mean that you cannot ask questions. You cannot, I mean, express yourselves. But do not live anyhow, giving yourself back to your old slave master. And then moment, if we all can, we we should be strong in our mind. We should know when to say no and when to say yes. That comes with self control. I believe that this morning, through the shadow gospel, we have learned something. We should go and work on this, especially by reading Ephesians chapter 1 carefully. God bless us all. Let's pray. Our Father, Lord, we thank you so much this morning. You saved us. But you still want us to live better spiritual lives. So you said we should move forward. We pray that you give us all willing spirit to be able to work on ourselves. In you, we are really strong. Because we are truly sealed. There is entry point to you, but no exit point. You want us to get all the good things in you. Whoever opens the heart and is willing will get all these good things. Thank you for blessing us in this retreat. There are more ahead of us we're going to listen to. 
Give us the heavenly ears and wisdom to understand and receive your words. We give you glory this morning. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So much. So much. So much. So much. So much.